In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of control flow constructs. Specifically, we're going to look at the if statement, the unless statement, and then the case when statement. So the first one is the if statement, and it's pretty common to other computer languages. You see an example here. You have if and then some Boolean test. This is going to return true or false. So this is where our Booleans from our other videos come into play here. If this evaluates as true, whatever follows this if in between the else is going to get executed. Now there is a form of this where you can have something like this. But instead of having an else, we just end it. So in this case, if the number is greater than 1, it'll have the same behavior as this if statement. However, if number is 1 or less, in this case, if statement here, it's going to go ahead and print out, after our, because our else will evaluate is true, that number is less than 1. Where in this case, if this evaluates as false, then nothing's going to happen. It's not going to print this out. It's just going to continue on with the flow. So when we're talking about control flow, the way to think about it is in Ruby here and in other computer languages is that the computer, the interpreter, and specifically in this case, is executing each of these statements line after line and depending on what the output or what if it's told to, to essentially branch somewhere or do something, it'll go ahead and do that. Now, an example of a branch, because really a branch has to do with go-to's and things like that and Ruby doesn't really support those but an if statement is a type of branch also because it controls what gets executed so if this evaluates is true it's gonna execute this statement but it's gonna skip over this statement and go to whatever this next statement is down here so that's essentially a branch it does this and jumps over if this evaluates is false it skips over this line goes to this line and executes that line and then continues on. So that's a type of branch there and that's you might hear ifs and uh, cases case when statements called branches and that's why they're called because you can move around. The origins of it though come from when there were go to's and you could actually move your program to a separate place you know by line number and, and like I said Ruby doesn't really support that type of thing. So the if construct you have an if keyword then you have a boolean test and Ruby really doesn't care as long as the end result of this is true or false. This can be some huge thing combining a bunch of method calls and ands and ors and comparison operators as long as the end result when we when it's done evaluating is true or false this will be happy and then based on that it will continue on and then you see the two forms here where the next keyword is else if we want to have a follow-up if it's false if this statements false and then we have and which actually ends the statement and then our simplified one which just has our if and our and you'll see lots of ifs in our other programs that we do in other videos here the unless is used quite a bit less I don't really use it that much, but it's an option, and it's just the reverse of an if. So you can just flip these statements around and get the same effect. And maybe it reads a little bit nicer, but it's there if you want to use it. Finally, the last one that might be a little odd for people coming in to try to understand is the case when statement. And it's similar to, in other languages, a select case statement. The, the really cool thing about this is that... The, this case when will operate on whatever this is. It doesn't have to be a number. Now C has a similar construct and so does Java, but they work with primitives only, which means integers or characters, that type of thing. This will work with strings or whatever you want to put in here, it'll work. And it's a nice branching kind of thing where you just want a certain thing to happen based on this value. So how this works is that you have this case keyword, you have something in here that's going to be evaluated, like I said, it can be anything. It has to be something that has a value. So it can be a method that returns a, a value of some kind or uh, something along those lines. It can't be a Boolean. It can't be true or false. It has to have something that has value that relates to these when statements. So you have that expression there to, that it has a value. Then you have a when keyword. And then here is your, essentially your test value, what you're going to test against. And in our case here, we're saying, Case In case of the number, 
When it's in between 1 and 4, we're going to go ahead and print out this. When it's between 5 and 8, we're going to print out this. So I can go ahead and run this real quick just to show you how this works. So our first one evaluates up here. And let me show you higher up here what number actually is. Number starts out at 1, it's just an assignment, and then I make it actually equal to 3 by just adding up, and you can see how you can combine assignment and mathematical operators there. Then we have our first test. If number is greater than 1, well, it is, so that's true, it's going to put, put the string number is greater than 1, and here we go, prints out. Then this next if does essentially the same thing, get the same thing. Now or unless, I flip these statements around, so unless the number is greater than 1, you're going to put numbers one or less. Well, the number is greater than one, so it's going to do the else statement. And then finally, in our case, case when number, which is one, when between it's when it's between one and four, put numbers in between one and four. So there we go. Now let's go ahead and change this real quick. Change it to something bigger. And let me run it here. And now it comes back greater than one or greater than one. But what's changed is down here our number is in between 5 and 8. Well, yep, it's 7, so it should be 5 and 8. So, there's a basic overview of the if, unless, and case statement.